Okay, this how-to video is going to talk about uh, how to schedule a net inside the Cadence PCB tools. So there are some instances where you may have um, some nets that are going across several component locations and you want to be very specific about how they're routed. And to do this, you can use the net scheduling command inside the Cadence PCB tools. So I've got uh, a couple of examples here. I've got uh, effectively a net that goes from a connector to an FPGA. I've got four memory devices and I've got some termination resistors. And what I want to do is I want to schedule this net um, similar to kind of a DDR memory. So what we'll do is we'll use the, the edit net schedule command. I can effectively click on the, the pin of the net that I'm interested in that I want to schedule and you'll see it highlights all the, the, the legal points. Um, and I can then effectively just pick the points of where I want it to start. So I want to start it on pin one of the connector. I then want to go to the pin of the FPGA. Memory device one, memory device two, memory device three, memory device four, and then the termination resistor. And then I can do a right click finish that allows me to then continue and do the other four nets. So once I've scheduled my four nets, you can see that they've obviously changed the direction. Um, I'm also going to go and schedule another net over here. So I'm going to pick this net here that comes from an FPGA. Let's do uh, edit net schedule again. We'll pick the net that we're interested in. I'm going to insert something called a virtual point or a T point. Um, so I'm going to come out from this IC here. I'm going to do a right click and insert T. Put a T point down here and then go to this memory device or this device here. Back to the T point to this device. So this is a virtual point that I can then effectively move around, place it somewhere on the board where I want to be very specific with. Um, you can actually snap it to things like vias. So you get a good known location and it can be quite a useful point. You can then use um, some of the length matching rules because this is now becomes a point that you can physically see on the net. It's now called a T point. So it's called the net.t.1. If you added more than two, uh, another T point, it would be net name.t.2, etc. So once I've uh, got my net scheduled, let's have a look at Constraint Manager. So we're going to set up constraints. If we go to the electrical workbook, um, the net area, wiring, you can see effectively there's my, my address bus. They now have something called a user-defined schedule. So we can then say, do we want to verify the schedule? So we'll say yes to this, which basically means I would get a DRC error if I routed differently from the way that I've, uh, I've scheduled this net. So we'll do that for, for both of these nets. So there's the other net down here, which is a schedule. Now, um, it is unrooted, but I would normally expect to see a pass or something here. And the yellow column headings is, is a big clue to the fact that um, we need to make sure that the DRC mode is enabled. So we can do that in one or two ways. We can do a right mouse button on the column heading and just choose analysis mode, or we can go to analyze analysis modes. Look at the electrical, and you can see a stub length net schedule is turned off. So we'll just turn that on. You do actually get a little uh, tool tip. There's a little information button and you look on the right hand side of this form, you'll see effectively what it does. Uh, we'll do an apply and OK and you'll see these effectively, these are going to pass. While I'm here, um, we'll also go and set a stub length. So the stub length setting here, the max stub length value, allows you to um, utilize sharing buys effectively. So if you look at the way this, this net here is scheduled, it's, it's, going, it's coming from the connector to this uh, FPGA. I've got a sharing via here. So um, from a routing point of view, I'd have to route into the pin on the FPGA and then route out on a separate uh, path to meet the schedule. But by adding a stub width, it means I can use this sharing via, so this via location, so I could route to the via and then continue off from the via um, and without causing an error on the uh, on the schedule. So if we go back to Constraint Manager, we'll go and add a, a stub length of say 0.5 millimeter. Um, I'm not gonna bother with this one. Let's add, let's, in fact, let's add a 0.5 millimeter here. So you then resolve any issues that you have from a sharing point of view when you're routing. So just to show you an example, if I was to route this net, so I'm going to route from the from the T point, I'm going to come down to the FPGA. I'm then going to route for the, from the T point again. We'll go to, to this memory device. So for me to meet the schedule, I'd have to route effectively from, from the T point directly to here. But if this is the shortest path, so let's pick the C line point. You can see straight away I'm getting a DRC error on the on the net. If I just continue that, I get an error here. 
does not verify because I'm, I'm breaking the schedule because I'm not coming directly from the T point. I need to come from the T point rather than the C line segment. So let's just delete that. And then if we the add connect again, this time we'll come directly from the T point. You'll see I'm now effectively meeting the schedule and I don't get any DRCs. And if we go back to constraint manager, let's go and look at net six. It's a pass and we're all good to go.